Hi there, my name is Will and I'm going to walk you through how you can manage secrets inside of Kestra. Now inside of Kestra you can manage secrets in one of two ways. The easiest way is by using the secret management that's part of our enterprise edition. Inside of this you can manage it directly inside of the UI. Let's check it out. So inside of your namespace there will be a tab called secrets and in here you can then add your key value pairs for secrets very easily. And you can also add descriptions and tags to make it easier to find these. Now, this is definitely the easiest way to manage them because you can do it directly inside of the UI and be able to edit them very easily. So here I've just added a very simple secret called my secret. That's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can add a quick description as well. And I can also add some tags. So I can now save my secret and see that it's now available here. And these secrets are now bound by the namespace. So I can't access these necessarily between my namespaces, but if I want to be able to access secrets in a parent namespace, I can also inherit those too. So I don't actually have any in my parent namespace, but I could get those too. If I was to create a brand new flow, I would be able to then access this by using an expression. And by just typing secret and then in brackets using the key of my secret, I'd be able to then get that value. And as you can see here, it's going to then print that out, but it's gonna mask it because it is a secret. This is really useful if you wanna be able to use secrets between a bunch of different flows in a namespace, such as setting up maybe a Google Cloud service account, JSON, where you wanna be able to access that between multiple flows, but have it stored in one place, then this is definitely the easiest way. You can also set your variables as part of your Docker Compose configuration. So you can do that in the open source and the enterprise edition. Let's check out how you do that. So here I've got a brand new Docker Compose uh, from the Kestra website. Now this is our standard Docker Compose that we can easily use to spin up Kestra and I've not changed anything here. Under the Kestra Docker container, we can see that we've got a bunch of different properties, but we wanna go to environment because we're gonna add these secrets as environment variables to our configuration. Now, all we have to do is make sure that we start to the name of the secret with secret in block capitals like so. Um, and then we also then need to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this my secret. And then after I've done that, I can then add it in. But the key thing is I need to make sure that I base 64 encode the secret to be able to access it inside of Kestra. Now to do that, I can use this simple command in the terminal by doing an echo dash N, which will get rid of any new lines, the actual value of my secret, and then base 64. And I'll see that it's going to produce a nice little value here. So I can see my private code is what we're after. Now, if I was to then add that here, just after the secret, I should now be able to access that inside of Kestra. So all I now need to do is uh, spin up this example and we can give it a go. Great, so my Docker Compose has now started. So now if I go to my browser and give this a refresh, we should see Kestra load up and then we can try and access that secret. So this is a completely new version of Kestra, uh, nothing in here before other than a couple of random bits. Now let's just quickly try and uh, access that value. So here I can now execute this flow and we'll see that when I execute this, it will give us masked again. We'll see if I change it to anything else, it will fail because that secret doesn't exist, right? So here it's just given us nothing because there is nothing with that key. So that is one way to prove that it's working. Now we can actually take this one step further and instead of having to edit the Docker Compose, which is just a bit fiddly where there's so much going on in it already, we can store this in a separate file and then reference it in the Docker Compose. So let's give that a go. So what we're gonna do is create a .env file, uh, very simple. And here is just gonna be very simple to what you would normally see in a .env file. We're gonna put a bunch of our secrets in there, but instead of having them all base64 encoded in the .env, what we'll do is we'll put them in their raw format and then we can run a command to turn them into base64. So it makes it much easier for us to see what the secrets actually are, make them human readable, while being able to manage the base64 encoded so it does work in Kestra. So here is an example where I've just got some random things, you know, maybe you're gonna store a GitHub access token, AWS access key, all common things to store as secrets. As we would expect, I can store them in plain text. But now let's base64 encode those so that we can access those in Kestra. Now I can run this command in the terminal that's going to append secret on the front of them that we need, as well as base64 encode them. So uh, when I do that, we'll see that it's gonna create us a brand new file called .env underscore encoded. And I can see now that it's got everything in here um, from the original file, but it's got secret in front of it, 
but also everything's base64 encoded. So all we need to do now is just reference this EMV file in our Docker Compose and we're ready to go. So now we can get rid of our old secret, but instead of using the environment, we're going to do uh, M file. And then here is where we can easily specify the EMV encoded file. So now we're gonna be able to access the environment variables that are pre-encoded. And now I can spin up Docker again and we can see if we can access these. Let's have a look. So we're back into Kestra now. As you can see, I've got our AWS access key ID. I've got that already here in the secret. And when I execute this, we'll see that it's gonna give us a masked value to show that the secret does exist. So this is a much easier way for managing your secrets where you can store them all in this EMV file. You could put that couple of lines of shell script into a separate script file that you can then just call the script. It will convert it automatically into the .env encoded file, which is being referenced in our Docker Compose here under an EMV file rather than under the environment property. And then every time we spin up Kestro, we can access that. So a couple of things to just bear in mind, anytime you update any variables, you will need to spin down your container and then re-spin it up to be able to access those new secrets. So a little bit more faffy than the enterprise edition, but if you do this method, it's fairly streamlined. And if you don't care about security whatsoever and you're happy to just hard code them into your uh, workflows, you can also use the key value store inside of the namespace as well uh, to store them. Because in the same way, secrets is very similar other than the secret manager is secure, whereas key value store is just gonna store it in plain text. So proceed at your own caution. Uh, if you'd rather everything be a little bit more secure, then you can do the approach that we've done here using the Docker Compose, but I'll let you decide what's best for you. Hopefully you're gonna start using secrets inside of Kestra. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below and don't forget to give us a start on GitHub.